Hey guys, good day and welcome to today on Princess Annie TV. <laughs> Happy new month, yeah, because I'll say this is the first video I'm uploading in February. So, hope you guys have been fine and hope you are chasing your dreams because that's that's always the cook on this channel. Make sure you are doing something that will get you to where you want to get to or where you want to go. <laughs> Okay, but just in case you are new to this channel, we talk about aviation, motivation, and adventure. And if in case you have not subscribed and you love aviation and you love seeing my face, <laughs> please do me a favor, subscribe. Yeah, click on the subscribe button. So today I want to talk about first landing without power. And it's a bit technical, but I want to give a reference, especially for flight school students. Some things you will be asked, especially when you're doing a check ride or when you're going for that first landing with power, without power, because there's first landing without power and there's first landing with power. Just in case, now beginning what like, is known as the somebody's wondering, like, pre -flare maneuver, we'll pull in case you're not an one. aviator and you're thinking, ah, why should you be doing first landing without power? Can you remember this Sully? The Sully a crash at that time. Actually, everybody survived, thank God. But that was a situation of force landing without power because they lost their engines, beds entered, and they had to land. And there are some things you have to consider even while doing your emergency procedures to make sure that you land in, a, in the best place possible so that you can have maybe save a lot of lives both on board and on the ground. And I'm just going to be giving reference to what I was taught in flight school so that you just have this at the back of your mind, just in case you're flying as a student pilot and you're even flying on your own. The five S's, five S's. I don't know whether that sounds nice, <laughs> but that's actually how we were taught. There are five S's that you need to consider when considering the field that you want to land. Because you know the aim of for landing without power. You land the aircraft safely in the event of total loss of power. That's total engine failure for you to be able to land the aircraft safely. And when you think of landing aircraft safely, you want to save the people on board and you want to save the people too on the ground. Because people on the ground too, as, as much, they are very much important as the people you have on board. <laughs> I know you don't want to die, but do make the people on the ground too to die. So I'm not, I'm not a flight school instructor. I'm a lover of aviation and I'm a pilot also. So in case you're wondering, listen to your flight school instructor. This is what I was taught. This is what I want to share. And this is my take. Five S's that you should have in your mind. So first things, you know that when you're considering for landing without power, your aircraft just lost power. And most of the time in, in in flight school, we use aircraft with only one engine. It's not like you're flying in airlines and you have dual engine. That one, you can do single engine landing, which is better. Single engine landing is better when you... <laughs> because it's not a total emergency when you have just one engine. But when you don't have any engines at all, that's where there is a problem. That's even the, in fact, it's not a problem. That's a big, big problem. And that's part of what I think helicopters face a lot because once there's no, um, once there's no, uh, what do they call it? There's no power. They lose, they lose their engine. That's all. Like, they begin to think, where can I land this? Where can I land it? And then they even have a shorter, shorter time to spend roaming around. At least you as a single engine person, you can still maneuver because Maybe your propellers are still rolling. You still have some kind of trust. So, and again, you have altitude, you have speed. You can still buy some time. But <laughs> when is the helicopter? I don't know how much time we can. Anyways, I'm not a helicopter pilot. So I can't really talk for the helicopter guys. But now we are talking about not helicopter, but fixed wing. Sorry, I keep putting my hand here because I have my iPad in front of me. Maybe I shouldn't bring it here. <laughs> No, it's going to be a little bit distracting. Let me keep it there. So let's talk about the five S's. Number one is the size. The size of the field. The size of the field is important. And you see in that, if you watch the Sully film, like Captain Sully, if you watch the movie, you're going to see that 
around the area where they wanted to land or where they had their engine failure there were a lot of built up houses so you're going to land on the house there's no there's no rate of survival for you for the people on ground for everybody everybody's going down everybody is going down well that's my take anyways everybody's going down so you have to think of the size of the field now you, you're going to see most of the time in flight school we used farmlands because we had a lot of farmlands around us we didn't do the actual first landing without power you just come very close to the ground i think we did about when we were around let's see it's 1000 feet to the ground then you, the instructor will add power back and you guys will go up if it goes less than that 1000 if the instructor tells you 1000 and you go less than that 1000 it's like you feel the exercise so you're coming you know the instructor closes the power and you guys are you know trying to maneuver to come to land you're trying to look for uh, where the wind direction is coming from you know those are the other parameters you consider but now we are considering the field that's what i'm trying to talk about the five s's to look out for when you're looking out for the field the size the surface the slope the shape and the surrounding now let's talk about these things individually the size how large is the field the field has to be large because if the field is not large then there's going to be a problem you think of your aircraft and you think of the field the field has to be large enough to be able to contain your aircraft so that's why i thought about captain suli was a very brilliant pilot like this guy thought about where else will i land this airplane and on the ocean was on the, <laughs> on the river was a very good place because it's wide enough but now that is ditching ditching has its own exercise now imagine if you did not pay attention to everything they taught you in ditching and you now have to ditch wahala please pay attention to your instructors <laughs> anyways let's go next one surface it's good that a surface has to be smooth because if you land in a surface that <clears throat> forget you don't have a choice but now you are at 4,000 feet or 5,000 feet doing your exercise above the ground as a student pilot and now something happens to your airplane these are the things you look out for that's why some people even prefer to even go and land on the road but that road has to be less busy because imagine cars coming and you're trying to land on the road and that is going to be somehow funny actually but you're trying to Take advantage of all the opportunities that you have. Another thing is slope. It's better to land up slope so that the aircraft can stop and to land down slope. If you land in an FU that is down slope, you keep going, 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 and only God knows where you're going to get to. But if you land in a field that is up slope, your your aircraft is going to stop. At least it's roll for a time and it will stop. So it's better that and most of the time when your instructors take you to those fields or what? those areas where they do for slanting they already have picked out a field in their mind so as you come to that place and it's telling you okay we are going to be doing the exercise all you need to be doing is to be looking out just in case the aircraft he closes the engine for instance or you lose an engine where can you land and this is what they always tell you if you're going for cross country flying alone as a student pilot or flying somewhere that's you no know, you're alone you have to as you're flying you have to be thinking god forbid if this engine fails what is going to happen because it keeps you alert okay where can i land around this area is this is the size of the airfield big enough can i try to maneuver and lose you know some altitude why you know using speed and altitude like to compensate and go to a better place you know that and that you have to catch the ship let it look come somehow like a runway like position kind of picture a runway on that place where will be my touchdown zone How, will i be able to roll enough like further enough you know those are the things that should be coming you know to your mind and when you're thinking of upslope uh when you're thinking of sorry in the shape you have to look at a rectangular shape or a square shape and that's going to really really help you because those are the things that look like a runway so you just analyze it in your mind and say okay does this thing look like a rectangular shape or a square shape and you know that okay if you if you do like base leg final and you come and you lose altitude to land you're going to be in a very very good position and that is the surrounding is it close to people 
it's good to land somehow close to people because you can easily find help imagine now you go and land very very far away from where you can't see houses you can't see people yes you have your survivor kit in the aircraft because every aircraft always has survivor kit including the aircraft we flew as student pilot it had survivor kits and those aircrafts that had survivor uh, that have survivor kits they have crash ads so after cracking the glasses of the aircraft and you come out and maybe you have water i think there's usually capri sun and biscuit or something like inside the survivor kit let's say you have you managed to eat and all how will you be able to communicate if you're too too far away from people it's going to be a problem to get help you know out of where you have had that incident or accident so these are five s's that you should consider these five s's are very very important apart from other things they are going to teach you as mm, hold altitudes train for a bad class fee look out for an airfield looking for all those things they're going to teach you but these five s's you should always always have in mind have in mind the size the surface don't forget size surface surrounding slope what else what else are we missing <laughs> yeah size surface yes slope shape 20 so miles per hour these five things are really going to help you in your decision of choosing the kind of field to land when you have an Here's event down of, for slamming without power i'm wishing you guys the best as you're in flight school and those that are still yet to enter flight school i'm wishing you the best as you look for a very good flight school that is going to suit your budget and suit your taste so till we meet next time on this same channel keep watching princess and tv don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed bye